Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Scotland and we're going to return to a brewery that has now featured on the channel a good couple of times before. I've had some very, very nice beers from these guys over the last 18 months, two years, and uh, at the moment they're getting a lot of attention and I have to say it's thoroughly deserved. I think the main reason that they're getting a lot of attention at the moment is that their beers have gone down into England for the first time quite recently, but uh, the quality of their beers really does speak for itself actually so this is definitely one of the Scottish breweries to watch over 2021. So for this review then we are going to head through to Glasgow, Yoker to be specific and again I always smile when I hear Yoker, that sketch from the Limmy show with Dee Dee on the bus freaking out because it's taken him to Yoker, just cracks me up, Dee Dee in the kitchen is a great one as well but obviously Yoker is home to a top class brewery these days. So we're going to have a look at another beer from the wonderful Overtone Brewing Company, this is apparently review number 9 that I've done from these guys and this one is the Dusty Mill Miller Stout which comes in at 11% ABV and I think we can say that this one is going to be a sweet stout. There's cocoa nibs, marshmallow, vanilla and lactose in this one. So I think safe to say this probably will be quite a sweet stout actually. But uh, yeah, my second Imperial Stout from these guys, third stout overall. The last beer that I reviewed from them was the Dark Banter which again was an 11% Imperial Stout and before that it was the Wake Up which was a 7.5% um, breakfast stout I think they were calling it or coffee stout whatever you want to say but this brewery really kind of made their name when it comes to the IPAs I've had a West Coast IPA from these guys a couple of uh, New England hazy type IPAs a lager and then probably my favourite beer that I've ever had from these guys would be the Rwandan Coffee Press um, IPA that beer was just so quirky but it worked and uh, that was my very first encounter with this brewery come to think of of it so um, yeah really really impressed with that one but these guys definitely one of the Scottish breweries to watch particularly if you like your New England hazy IPAs so um, yeah awesome brewery and one that I do recommend that you check out and I have to say very curious to try this beer from them today so um, yeah let's see how we get on with this one then so as always with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Overtone Brewing Company before and you will no doubt see more added to that list in the fairly near future there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Scottish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to quite regularly at the moment because I am enjoying an extended stay in Scotland thanks to COVID-19 and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about Overtone Brewing Company then on to my brewery notes so Overtone Brewing Company as I've told you already are based in Glasgow Yoker to be specific and the company was founded back in 2018 by Bo Wei Wang who is originally from Beijing in China so he'd been a home brewer for a number of years prior to founding the brewery and the name actually is taken from his love of music Overtone so um, yeah, pretty cool actually. And that's another thing about this brewery. The artwork apparently is supposed to be a reference to, you know, techno music actually. All these different kind of patterns that you see on the front. I know my friend Peter at the Clueless Drinker is a massive fan of the artwork on these beers actually but it is a reference apparently to techno music um, but basically in the early days of this brewery Bowie hired Dan Miller who's from New Hampshire over in America as his head brewer and he had previously worked as a head chef but then also as a brewer in England New York and also in Scotland for Six Degrees North who are a Belgian style brewery definitely worth checking out incidentally um, but he has basically put the brewery in the direction of brewing all these kind of hazy New England IPAs, they've been doing some West Coast IPAs recently and uh, also these big Imperial Stouts but um, under under his guidance this brewery have done it very very well but also involved at the brewery is Martin Conaghan who worked in the craft beer scene for a number of years uh, in New Zealand he spent quite a few years down there working in the craft beer scene and these days he works uh, taking part in the brewing and also doing various other things around the brewery as well but the brewery itself can be found in the New Albion Industrial Estate in Yoker near Renfrew and Clyde Bank my parents grandparents uh, one of them was from Renfrew, the other one was from Clyde Bank. Um, so yeah, quite a local brewery for my grandparents if they were still around. That's quite cool actually. Um, but the brewery actually 
don't have a fixed range, uh, although there are beers that are quite popular and they come back every so often. This particular beer was actually a rebrew, but they're always brewing different stuff and it was saying on their social media recently that they do plan to have two new beers fresh at the brewery every week, so theoretically speaking you could actually um, order and you, you could order a new set of beers from these guys every week which is pretty impressive um, but uh, as of January 2021 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced just over 60 different kinds of beer but obviously that is going to increase quite dramatically over um, you know over the coming months and, and uh, years and stuff like this because they are being so prolific but um, yeah that's all I can really tell you about this brewery for the moment like I said they've been getting a lot of attention in recent times because of the quality of their beer um, and I think mainly the fact that it's kicked off a little bit more is because the beers are making it down to England now and their their name is becoming a little bit more well known because um, yeah I, I first encountered these beers back in I want to say early 2019 I want to say around early 2019 I first uh, discovered the Overtone beers and uh, it was the, the, as I say, the coffee IPA and then the Azaka New England double IPA that I had and those were just cracking, cracking beers. So it is nice to see these guys getting a little bit of recognition. So yeah, definitely worth trying some of their beers. If you're watching in Scotland, you can get free delivery, I think, if you order over, is it £35 maybe? If you make an order over £35, you will get um, free delivery from the brewery. So yeah, that's definitely worth checking out actually but um, yeah definitely try some of their beers and uh, you won't be disappointed with them that's for sure but yeah that's all I can really tell you about Overtone Brewing Company for the moment if you want to learn more about these guys you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done so um, yeah let's see how we get on with this one then so um, let's get this guy out and we will get on with the tasting then. So I'll just like have a little look at the artwork in this one quickly. It actually does look like, you know, a kind of stirred coffee or something on the top here compared to some of the other artworks that we've had from uh, Overtone Brewing before. Um, it doesn't tell you the artist. I don't know if it's Bo Wei that actually designs these himself, come to think of it. Um, but yeah, there you can see Overtone Dusty Miller Stout, 11% ABV this one, uh, the hops in this one are is simply Magnum, the malt base is Maris Otter, Chocolate Wheat, Chocolate Malt, Oats, Carafa 2 and Biscuit Malt, it's an English Ale Yeast in this one and then the adjuncts are Cocoa Nibs, Marshmallow, Vanilla and Lactose. So um, yeah, the name of this beer is actually quite interesting as well. So Dusty Miller, um, Dusty Miller was a POW during the Second World War out in the East and um, he was he was crucified by the Japanese because of his faith. Apparently, he was from uh, Newcastle, and uh, he served in the Argyle. What is it? The Argyles and Sutherland Highlanders. Um, he served in one of the Scottish regiments. Incidentally, he was a Methodist, and he used to pray. And the Japanese crucified him for his faith. Um, and he's in. He's mentioned in a book by a guy called Ernest Gordon, who wrote. I think it's called The Valley. Um, of the River Kwai, if I remember the name rightly, but I think the only Dusty Miller I can think of that this could be a reference to, considering it's a Scottish brewery, would be that guy. So yeah, I think that um, is what the the name is a reference to. So um, yeah, hopefully that's right, hopefully that's right. But like I say, an 11% Imperial Stout, this one, 440 millilitres, and I think I paid like £6.50, £7 for this one. So if it's £7, let's just say 7 for for you know, shits and giggles, but seven pounds would be around, uh, you know, eight euros or so these days, maybe about eight dollars fifty American, maybe a little bit more than that, and then for you guys watching in Sweden, that would be seven times eleven, yeah, about, you know, 77, maybe 80 kroners, something like that for this beer. Um, so yeah, that gives you a few points of reference, but let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then and see how we go. But uh, yeah, 440 milliliter can, and I bought this one direct from the brewery with the other beers that you've seen me review. A little while ago but I actually just checked on the brewery before filming this one and they've got two other um, IPAs um, that have just come out. Cutting Teeth which is a honey, a galaxy and honey IPA which sounds quite interesting and uh, I forget what the other one was called, I think it was called Laurel Laurel Laurel, 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 Laurel Hops or something like that. So yeah, don't know if I'll get to taste those when during my extended stay. 
yeah, I've got enough beer in the house at the moment, to be honest, anyway. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I do want to try the Oft at some point, and the, there was another one. Um, it, and the Oft to the Ouija, and I think there was another one on top of those two that I'd love to try. But do give me your overtone recommendations. I'd love to see those in the uh, the comments section below. And I'd love to try a black IPA from these guys, actually. I've been impressed with the Hazies and with the, um, the West Coasters from them. So, a black IPA. Let me know if there's been a black IPA. I didn't see it in uh, the untapped part of the video. But yeah, 11% um, eleven percent Imperial Stout, this one, and I have to say it certainly looks the part. So if I hold this beer up to the light, there's very little in the way of um, clarity to this one. It is very, very opaque. You can see that when we poured it, it had about a quarter finger of a frothy, I would say, kind of fawn-coloured head. That's faded away to just be a very kind of thin, wispy layer with a little bit of a ring around the edge of the glass. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side there, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head, and it does look pretty damn nice I have to say but um, yeah um, pretty much as you would expect for an Imperial Stout a lovely dark sort of ebony kind of rosewood colour beer this one it looks very very attractive and um, yeah I have to say just quite curious to see how this one turns out because this certainly has a bigger malt bill than the dark banter had so I think this one could be a lot more of a sweet stout than dark banter was in fairness and uh, dark banter was a little bit more kind of RIS, Russian Imperial Stout, if I remember rightly. But yeah, certainly looks the part of this beer, as I said. Let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this one. Nothing surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance when you consider that it is an Imperial Stout. Oh, yeah. Um, that's a lovely, lovely smelling beer, this one. Um, very, very rich. That's the first, first thing you're going to notice about this one. So... Yeah, it's it's cracking. It is actually cracking. I've got a feeling that this one might well be a little bit thicker than the um, the dark banter um, was actually, and that was one of the things. That would be one of my on reflection. I think that would be one of my only kind of criticisms I could have a dark banter was that it just was a little bit almost light in its mouthfeel, if that makes sense. But then again, remember, I tend to view the Swedish, the Norwegian, the Danish beers most of the time because of where I normally live. And I don't. Th I've never come across imperial stouts that are as thick as uh, as the Scandinavian ones. The Scandinavian imperial stouts are ridiculous in terms of their thickness. So quite a lot of other stouts um, will feel fairly thin to me compared to those. Um, so remember, lot different beer tubers always have. Um, different references. So for those of you watching in Scotland, probably the opinions of some of the English beer tubers might be a better comparison, if you like. But yeah, um, we're quite spoiled for that in Scandinavia normally. But yeah, this beer smells absolutely lovely. So it's kind of what you would expect. There's nothing surprising about this beer in terms of its aroma, but it's just lovely. It is just absolutely lovely. Um, so straight away with this beer, you can smell a little bit of a kind of toasty bread crust, well-fired bread crust underneath. There's some really nice... Um, there's a really nice um, kind of brown bready note to it. It's not quite rye bread, but it really does have a little bit of a kind of brown bready backbone to it. Then you've got a very... Um, then you've got a very kind of well-fired um, kind of brown sugar note to this one sitting on top of that kind of brown bread. So yeah, it's very layered this beer. Bread crust, brown bread, brown sugars sitting on top of that and it's lovely. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's got a real kind of sweetness to it, this one. I mean, the, the, you get chocolate on top of that. The beer's got cocoa nibs in it, of course, and it's got a bit of marshmallow. I don't get so much of the marshmallow in fairness, but I think the marshmallow is just really going to make the beer uh, come across as being a little bit sweeter. But for me, I'm surprised with this one because the brown sugars, they don't come across as overly sweet. They really come across as being a little bit more kind of um, toasty and almost slightly oily in a way, to be honest with you. But yeah, lovely kind of um, well-fired bread crusty base to the beer. There's a little bit of a kind of brown bready thing in there. Some nice, um, some nice kind of oily um, brown sugary notes, but a well fired brown sugar mainly. I don't know if I'd go as far as treacle and molasses for this one, but um, yeah, it really has the brown sugary elements that come out of this one are very, very nice. Uh, there's maybe one or two little woody undertones to this beer, a little bit of nuttiness in the aroma, um, but you tend to get that from a lot of Imperial Stouts, to be honest with you. But this beer, um, it just it's very, very smooth in its malt base. It's got a bit of a kind of more toasty sweetness to it, but I suspect in the flavour profile it will come across as being very, very sweet. But from the aroma, you might think this is like an RIS, a Russian Imperial Stout. 
Um, so yeah, I like, I do like how this goes together. It does smell very, very smooth. You definitely get the oats. You can detect the oats really just smoothening this one out a little bit. Um, and I guess the wheat will be partially responsible for that too. But um, yeah, the, the aroma of this beer is just pretty pretty bouncing to be honest with you it's pretty good um, but yeah on the uh, hoppy side of things you do get a little bit of earthiness out of the beer absolutely um, you can smell the fruitiness is nice but we'll come to that in a minute as I say um, but yeah you get a wee bit of earthiness out of this one you can pick out a little bit of a kind of floral aromatic you know Magnum is quite a popular bittering hop in, in, um, in certain IPAs and stuff like this it's, uh, it's really nice, but you get a little bit of earthiness, you get a nice kind of floral aromaticity which comes across as quite deep, a little bit of lighter grassness there, then it's all about the red fruits after that. So let's take a look at that fruity side of the beer. Um, so for me, the fruity side of the beer, it comes across as sort of quite plummy. A lot of the time it's got a nice kind of juicy plummy note to it, maybe a tiny little hint of like a raisiny, that slightly sharper raisiny note. Um, but yeah, quite a juicy kind of plummy character to this one. Um, and other than that, it's like black currants and uh, and blackberries for me. You get a little bit of that softer, more juicy black currant and then the more oily blackberry. I don't get so much in the way of kind of figs and stuff out of this one. For me, a little bit of raisin, a little bit of plum, then yeah, black currant and more. Um, blackberry if you like. It's quite an oily fruity character that you get out of this beer which is kind of interesting but yeah um, it's interesting as well to come across this the carafa malt. I really think carafa works very very well in stouts. I do like my stouts to have a wee bit of a kind of breadiness to them in a lot of cases and carafa um, which incidentally is a trademarked malt variety from the Weirmann Brewery in Bamberg in Franconia, Northern Bavaria in Germany. I've been there. Do recommend you go and check out that town. That's where the Rauch beers come from. Love it. Beautiful place. But incidentally, um, this it, it, the Carafa gives you that distinctive bread crusty, well fired bread crusty, but still quite smooth brown bread. You know, and you can you pick that up in these beers. Carafa is a very distinctive malt. I don't know if I would have picked it out of this one in fairness, because of the just because of how complex the beer is, but um, it comes across really really nicely this one. There's a lovely aroma to this beer. Nothing surprising in terms of the style like I've said, especially after 2,600 beers, but um, yeah, it's just beautifully, it's beautifully done this one. So take a little bit of time to appreciate that before you get stuck into it. But let's have a taste of this beer then and see how we get on. So this one is the Dusty Miller Stout, um, an 11% Imperial Stout from Overtone Brewing Company in Yoker, uh, just to the west of the central part of Glasgow, Imperial style with cocoa nibs, marshmallow, vanilla and a bit of lactose in it. I think this is going to be a bit of a sweet beast to be honest with you. But yeah, let's get stuck in. Slange at school, cheers and definitely nice to have Overtone Brewing on the channel once again. Oh yeah. That is pretty damn nice, I have to say. Um, yeah, I'm not surprised because I, I really like the other two beers that I had from these guys, the other two uh, dark beers, I should say. So I'm not surprised that I like this one as well. Let's just say that. But yeah, it 100% comes across as being a good bit thicker. It comes across uh, definitely as being a good bit thicker than the dark banter was. I might have chilled the dark banter a little bit too much in fairness, but um, this beer is um, is pretty damn nice actually from that perspective. Um, so I'm just going to say straight away, thumbs up to Overtone Brewing Company once again. Not surprised considering the quality of the previous beers I've had from these guys, um, but yeah, it is quite different to be honest with you. I'm, I need to have a look through and see what other stouts and things they've done. They've done about 60 beers like I say, and I think this is review number 9 I've done from them. So. Yeah, I would like to keep up that rate. These guys, as I say, I love supporting the Scottish breweries and I wish I could get a hold of these you know, a bit more easily in Sweden. Um, I think Glassbank have started getting a few of them, but obviously Glassbank's markup is, is quite considerable. Let's just say that. Um, and it's um, and obviously you've got the Scandinavian taxis and so on there, but um, especially in Sweden for the beer. But yeah, the, the quality of this beer is really top class, actually. Um, but it's quite cool that I can get some of these in, in Scandinavia, so that might be a treat every so often, some Scottish overtone beers. Yeah. Um, it's lovely, lovely stuff, this one. It's got it's a really well-balanced stout. It's got a really 
nice balance between the kind of sweeter side of things. It's got, you know, it's, there's three, three, uh, there's three kind of prongs to this beer, if you like. You've got smoothness, sweetness, and um, just a little bit of toastiness underlying. Like, like the aroma kind of tells you, very, very kind of layered beer almost, and I really like it. Um, so yeah, let's try and break this down then. Straight away across the middle of your palate, you can feel the carafa, and if you've had a few beers with carafa in them, you really will get used to this sort of flavour that they give you. But you can feel that nice roasty, toasty, bread crusty quality just blanketing the um, the middle of your palate. That goes right across the middle of your tongue there. Um, so yeah, roasty, toasty, bread crust just kind of blanket in that middle part of your palate and on top of that you can feel that nice smooth brown bready character. If you go towards the back third of your palate you will get a little bit of bitterness on that border region instantly, we'll come back to that in a second, but you can feel on that back third of your palate the bready component of the beer just thickens up a wee bit. That's the wheat that's doing that. Absolutely, that's the wheat, uh, the sort of wheat part of this beer that's doing that. Um, but the knocking this beer around. Uh, very particular OCD when it comes to the can positioning. But um, yeah, the, the wheat just thickens up that little back part of the beer. But again, it still feels quite like brown bread. And at the very, very back of the palate, you will get a few elements of the kind of the, the more roasty, toasty elements of the, the kind of carafe malt there. But as you move further forward, if you go further forward um, from that roasty, toasty bit, you'll feel that the beer gradually smoothens out as you move uh, further forward in that back third of your palate. As I said earlier, you get that kind of slightly bitter border region between middle third and back third of your palate. Um, it's almost a little bit grainy, but at the same time, it's a little bit. It's a little bit like a kind of dry cocoa powder sort of thing you get out of the the beer there. So maybe that's some of the cocoa nibs sort of coming out. But then the thickness, as I say, drops away, and you get a smooth kind of. Um, you do get a little bit more of a kind of smoother breadiness under that, but you can feel some of the oaty smoothness in the middle of the beer. They they, they give you, I don't know, the oats just don't feel quite as thick as the wheat in this beer, to be honest with you, but it really does kind of smoothen the beer out a little bit. Um, I'm trying to place the brown sugars in this beer um, because it's, you will get a little bit of that from the carafa, which is interesting, and a little bit from the Maris Otter as well. So it's quite hard to place though, um, it's almost like on top of that kind of brown bready note, you might well have a little layer of a kind of toasty caramel quality to the beer. And then it's almost like maybe the marshmallow type flavours, that kind of marshmallowy type sugar thing. Marshmallows are basically pure sugar. Um, but yeah, that marshmallowy sugar quality you get out of this beer kind of sits on top of the brown sugars for me. And it's almost like the kind of dry cocoa uh, powder sort of thing. The cocoa nibs sit on top of that. This beer does get progressively drier the further that you go into the aftertaste. And that's when you feel these nice powdery um, chocolate notes coming out of the beer. It's lovely. It really is very, very nice. But yeah. It's good. The vanilla, I would say, you do get a little bit of vanilla out of this one, particularly um, towards the front of that. Um, yeah, particularly towards the front of that middle third of your tongue, you do get a little bit of that in there. But um, yeah, so yeah. <coughs> Took a little bit of that down the wrong way. Don't take that as a bad note against the beer because it's certainly not bad. But yeah, you do get a little bit of vanilla sweetness there uh, to the front. It's almost like in the middle of your palate, you've almost got like a little oaty circle, if you like, in that middle part of your palate. As I say, brown sugars underneath, I think marshmallow, kind of marshmallow and oats seem to be quite in sync here. But then towards the front of that almost oaty circle that you get in the middle of your palate, it's right there on the border with the kind of front third of your tongue. That's where you get some of these vanilla flavours coming out and they almost come across as a little bit sort of oily if that makes sense. You do get a little bit of that out of the beer. Um, but yeah, in the front corners of that middle third of your palate there is a little bit of dryness there and maybe one or two little kind of woody undertones. There's a little bit of a nuttiness. Uh, there's a little bit of a nutty, a very slight nutty quality if you go to the centre of your palate and just move further forward. You do get a little bit of that out of this beer uh, but not a lot. On top of that marshmallow aioti sort of circle like I'm saying that's where you get the dry kind of cocoa nib cocoa powder element coming out of this beer um, but yeah the I think that describes the malt base in pretty pretty good detail to be honest with you I think that um, that's all we really need to say about it to be honest but I, I certainly like this beer I like how it goes together for sure um, yeah
yeah, this one is um, very, very nice. So, yeah, um, lovely, lovely beer. Um, the malt base is just, it really is very nice, this one. It's, um, I'd say this beer, it just feels a little bit thicker. It does feel a little bit thicker than the Dark Banter, but Dark Banter was a lovely, lovely beer. I, I maybe drank that just a little bit too cold, to be honest, on reflection. Uh, but this one, it's beautifully executed. This is, as I say, um, as the aroma kind of gave the impression, it's got a balance between smoothness, sweetness, and uh, a more kind of toasty character to be honest with you so yeah beautiful um, but on the hoppy side of things then back corners of the palate you have got a little bit of earthiness there as you move further forward the beer does develop a little bit of a herbal character then as you reach the kind of front corners of the palate there's a little bit of floral aromaticity to the beer not overly much the beer isn't overly bitter from the hoppy side of things but then round the front curve of the palate there's a little bit of a there is a little bit of a kind of grassiness coming out of the beer as well which I think is um, is it uh, adds a little bit of depth to the beer. I do like a little bit of a hoppy component to the beer, to be honest with you. But yeah, the fruity, the, the, that covers the green side, the hoppy side of this beer quite well, to be honest with you. But on that front third of your palate, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters from the hops just roll their way out. And um, this one is kind of what you'd expect. Um, it's got a lovely red fruity character that's quite similar actually to what I was thinking it would be from the aroma. Uh, but yeah, on that border region between front third and middle third of your palate, there is a little bit of kind of dryness and toastiness there and um, yeah as you move further forward from that it's got a little bit of an almost kind of cakey type quality as well so yeah um, yeah I do like how that uh, how that goes together but um, yeah the fruity um, the fruity kind of side of the beer is, is really interesting so you get a few kind of plummy notes at the very back of that front uh, that front third of your tongue there's a few sort of datey kind of more dry datey type qualities in there as well but then as you move further forward th there is a wee bit of raisin but I'd say more plum to be honest with you but it's got a little bit of that almost kind of Christmas puddingy type vibe to it to be quite honest but yeah as you move further forward that gradually fades away, it becomes a little bit more figgy and then as you reach the front half of that front third of your tongue there's black currant in there and a little bit more of a kind of oily blackberry type quality to the to the beer so yeah I do like how um, how that goes together in this one so um, yeah the fruity side of this beer I think is um, is really very very nice in that sense so um, yeah the, the I like that, that it has a little bit of that it's, it's got what you'd expect, to be honest, from a from a, an imperial stout. And I would say it leans a little bit more towards that Russian side of things. It's not a pastry stout or a really sweet stout in that kind of sense. Um, but yeah, you can... It, the lactose, I don't think, shows its head that much other than smoothening a little bit of the kind of bready qualities out. This isn't so much of a sweet stout, but it's a very smooth and quite silky stout. That's probably a better kind of thing of it. But the fruits are definitely oily. And I like on the front part of your palate how you've got a wee bit of a kind of oily blackberry but then a juicier black currant underneath and then a bit of plum and stuff like that too. What you'll notice as well about that fruity part of the beer is that there's a little bit of a kind of, you do get a bit of that kind of um, kind of bready, that sort of brown bready note and just slightly dry brown bready quality sitting underneath the, the fruity notes in there. But um, it's a lovely beer this and I think it's it's really well done. That I think I, I like this one a little bit more than Dark Banter and that's not to take anything away from Dark Banter but this one just um, strikes me a little bit more to be quite honest with you. I'll need to have a look and see what other Imperial Stouts they've done and see if there are any other ones I can try but very impressed with, with both of them but a little bit more so this one to be honest. Um, it's down to personal preference, beer is subjective remember just my opinion I think this one is a little bit it just sticks out a little bit more to me to be honest with you. Um, but yeah in terms of the mouthfeel then what would we say about this? Yeah it's quite, um, I would say that this is a pretty full-bodied beer, bottom end of full-bodied for me, though not the thickest of Imperial Stouts, but remember, I'm spoiled because the Scandinavian ones are just ridiculous in terms of thickness. But um, yeah, it's got a nice level of thickness to it. Carbonation is very, very smooth. It's got a really kind of silky, um, smooth type mouthfeel to it, this one, in honesty. Um, yeah, soft carbonation. You can feel the cleanliness of the water in this, though I say this about quite a lot of Scottish beers. We are very, very proud of our tap water in Scotland, quite rightly so, I think, though. 
Um, but yeah, it has a little bit of that kind of Scottish cleanliness to it, but it's a really smooth and quite silky beer. In terms of the IBUs, difficult to say in this one. Um, this is the weakest part of my beer review, and in my opinion, is my IBU um, count. So I think this one's maybe only about, I think it's about 50, maybe 60, 60 IBUs. There's a bit of dryness from the malts in this one, the carafa particularly, I would say. There's a little bit of hoppy bitterness, a bit of earthiness in there. Um, but otherwise, it's it's not the most bitter of Imperial Stouts you're going to come across. You do get a bit of that from the malt base as well, like I say. But it's quite smooth. I think the lactose and the, the, the marshmallows in this one have just kind of smoothed the beer out a little bit. Um, the vanilla is probably playing a role too, but the malt base, as I say, is very well balanced between roasty toastiness, smoothness, and a little bit of sweetness. I think it's really nicely done, and you've got a lovely oily um, and slightly juicy fruity character out of this beer too. Um, but yeah, this is a be another beautiful stout beer from Overtone Brewing Company, um, and I look forward to trying more from these guys. Um, I'd love to, you know, I'd love to see them do a barley wine. I don't know if they've done that already. I know they've got a few sours, so maybe I'll have to have a go at some of the. Um, uh, one or two of the sours from these guys, um, uh, you know, a Doppelbock or something, a Scotch Ale, you know, they're a Scottish brewery, I'd love to see these guys have a go at a Scotch Ale um, or a barley wine or something like that, you know, we'll see what these guys do over the next little while, but very impressed with this one and I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed all of the beers that I've had from these guys so far, so I think that's just a good way to kind of sign off on this one, lovely, lovely beer this and, you know, that's what we've come to expect from Overtone, so yeah, let's leave it there. This one was the Dusty Miller Stout, 11% ABV, beautifully done once again from Overtone Brewing Company. So um, yeah, this could be the last review that you see from Overtone in a little while, I don't know. Um, but yeah, we, you'll probably you'll see some later in the year, of course, in around September time. But yeah, this is beautifully done, and I'm glad that I was able to review this beer for you. So let's leave it there. Thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Overtone Brewing Company. We will return to these guys later in the year, if not sooner, as I said. And uh, yeah, check these guys out. One of the Scottish breweries that you really need to keep an eye out for in 2020. The Dusty Miller Imperial Stout at 11% ABV from Overtone Brewing Company in Yoker, just to the west of central Glasgow. Slange it, skull, cheers, and make sure you check out this brewery. Some awesome stuff from them right now. Catch you guys later. Slange it.